Hi, my name is Chris Hardy, and I'm really interested in obesity because it's one of the largest health issues that we face today, and it's a growing problem. In just the last 30 years, the rates of obesity around the world have nearly doubled. And that's a big problem because obesity is known to lead to diabetes and heart disease, which ultimately leads to a shorter lifespan. Um, and the, the tendency of westernized societies to eat more and exercise less is a huge obstacle to treatment. Um, but science has clearly shown again and again that obesity is more than just what you eat and how often you go to the gym. There's clearly a heritable genetic component. And understanding what genes make you fat and how that fat affects the heart is the main focus of my research. And in order to do that, I use a really important model organism, the fruit fly, Drosophila melanogaster. Um, and when I tell people that I study really fat flies, they think I'm crazy. Uh, <laughs> but flies are much more similar to humans than people might think, with about 75% of genes that cause a disease in humans also found in the fly. You can even take fruit fly insulin and activate the mammalian insulin receptor and vice versa. So here at UNLV, we've established a very unique system in order to study obesity in fruit flies. It started 15 years ago when my advisor, Dr. Alan Gibbs, took a set of fruit flies from the wild and brought them into the lab to do a long-term evolution experiment. Each generation, he would select for only the flies that could survive the longest without food. And these tended to be the ones that could store the most fat. So over time, it became survival of the fattest, with fat genes being passed down generation after generation. <laughs> Now, 88 generations later, we've evolved fruit flies that are extremely obese, um, so fat that they even have a hard time trying to fly. And so my first research, research question was to figure out if they also had heart disease, and they do. So we took advantage of a machine that optometrists use to look at nerve structures in the eye and turned it around to look at heart parameters in the fly. So you can see the results here. We're looking at down the barrel of a skinny heart. The normal heart is open, and over time it completely closes, opens, and closes. In our fat flies, the heart is wider, it's dilated, and it doesn't completely contract, making it less efficient. There's a condition known as dilated cardiomyopathy. We found out that this was caused by extremely large, um, basically, deposits of fat tissue in our fat flies, which forced the heart from its normal position along the back of the fly and just kind of severely shoved it down into the middle of the animal. And this was really stressing the muscles that were helping the heart relax. So the next step was we took this fat tissue, we zoomed in on the individual fat cells, and we found that they contained extremely large lipid droplets, which are little compartments inside the cell that store most of the fat. And the cool thing is that these are very genetically similar to lipid droplets that you would find in human fat cells. And so the next step is to figure out what genes are involved. And so to do that, we started a genome-wide association study where we took DNA from a skinny fly, took DNA from a fat fly, and sequenced it. So now we know all the A's, T's, G's, and C's that make up a skinny versus a fat fly. We're currently, as of right now, in the lab running computer programs to figure out what genes are responsible for this increase in size. Um, and many of them will be conserved in humans, and there will be targets for therapeutic intervention in the future. Thank you.